If you're looking to buy your first home, you probably have a fixed amount of assets available to make that happen. If that's the case, it's critical that you know the differences between the two primary options for minimum down mortgages, and that is the 3.5% down FHA and the 3% down conventional. Maybe you didn't even know that conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans were an option if you were putting less than 20% down. Or it's possible that you hear 3% down, understand that's less than the 3.5% down on FHA, and think that that's the right choice for you. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. Today, we're going to go through the details and determine which of these options is best for you. Now, when I work with buyers, there are three questions that are top of mind. Number one, they want to know, what's my monthly payment going to be? Once they know the monthly payment, they say, cool, how much does that enable me to qualify for? And the last thing that they want to know, and this is possibly the most important, is how much money do I need? What do I need to have for both my down payment, my closing costs, my prepaids, and anything else that I need to pay as part of this transaction? Well, depending on which of these two loan options you choose, the answers are going to be very different. So let's get started and walk you through the differences, the pros and cons of each, so that you can decide which is best for you and your family to make your your home ownership dream a reality. So let's start by answering the number one most important question for most people, which is, what is my monthly payment? If I buy X priced home, how much is it gonna cost me every month? So there's two components that go into it when we're comparing FHA loans and conventional loans. The first is the interest rate. Everyone knows that a lower interest rate will have a lower monthly payment, and a higher interest rate will have a higher monthly payment. Then in addition, there's a mortgage insurance component to this, because we're putting less than 20% down, the lender's gonna require you to have mortgage insurance. Let's start with a surprising fact here that most people are unaware of. FHA loans actually have a lower interest rate than conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loans. The number one reason for that is that FHA loans have an actual government guarantee. Because of that, investors in Ginnie Mae bonds, which is where FHA loans are sold in the secondary market, will pay more for those, meaning that the yield or the interest rate is lower, which is a benefit to you. As of today, here at the beginning of March 2024, FHA loans with zero points are about six and a quarter. Now, let's take a look at conventional loans, loans that are underwritten to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac guidelines. An important thing to note here is that due to the concept of loan level price adjustments, adjustments for credit scores, adjustments for loan to value, you will pay more the lower your credit score is. So if you have perfect flawless credit, today with zero points, that conventional loan will be at 6.99%. That's a full three quarters of a percent higher than the FHA loan. Now, if you have a 720 score, still a very good credit score, but that's gonna bump the rate up to seven and a quarter. You're now a full percent higher than today's FHA zero point rate. Now, if you have a score at 660, which is not bad, still eligible for the program, that's gonna go all the way up to 7.625 or 1.375% higher than an FHA loan. You're probably already starting to see that when you get lower on scores, because FHA does not punish you for the lower scores, they will if they go below 640 or so, but 640 and above gets you the best tier. You're starting to see that conventional interest rates are gonna be a bunch higher, but that's not the only element that goes into your monthly payment. We also have the mortgage insurance. Now on an FHA loan, a minimum down, 3.5% down, actually anything less than 5% down has 0.55% mortgage insurance. For the purposes of this video, that's probably most of you watching it. Now, let's take a look at conventional loans, where we have to remember that your mortgage insurance rate and monthly payment is going to vary with your credit score. The lower your credit score, the more you're gonna pay in terms of mortgage insurance. You'll also get a slight break on your mortgage insurance if you have two borrowers versus one, and you'll also pay a little bit more if you're buying a condominium versus a single family residence. So for this purpose, we're looking at one borrower and just the credit score at a 3% down. So if we have an 800 credit score, again, top of the food chain in terms of credit, you're looking at a savings. Instead of 0.55%, you're down to 0.370, which is a 0.18% savings, which it's not huge, but it's significant. Now at 720, it goes up to 0.72. So it's almost the opposite of the 800 credit score where you're paying 0.17% more. So for all intents and purposes, the mortgage insurance is in the same ballpark. Now, the lower we go on the scale, it starts to get punitive. At a 660 credit score, conventional is almost no longer an option because the mortgage insurance alone jumps up to 1.76%. That's over 1.2% higher in terms of the monthly mortgage insurance rate than the FHA loan. So for those borrowers under 680, we're starting to get pushed over towards FHA, and we'll see that as we look forward. Now, between interest rate, mortgage insurance, we're gonna go back to our example of a 500,000 
$1,000 purchase. Today, with an FHA at six and a quarter, your principal and interest plus your mortgage insurance, the things that are dictated by the mortgage program, would total about $3,153. Now, if we go over to conventional, that perfect 800 credit score borrower is gonna pay $3,373. So that's a $220 increase in that monthly payment. At 720, they're paying a premium to the interest rate, they're paying a little premium to the mortgage insurance, and it bumps that payment up to $3,600. It's $447 more a month. Again, we're starting to see the scales tilt towards the FHA transaction here. Now, if we go all the way down to 660, where we had almost one and a half percent higher interest rate, almost one and a quarter percent higher mortgage insurance, that payment goes up to $4,144, or an extra $958 a month. So, comparing these two options, it's pretty easy to see that across the credit spectrum, no matter how good your credit is, if we're just gauging on the lowest monthly payment, the FHA loan will have a slightly to significantly lower monthly payment. Now, with that, let's move on to what do I qualify for and see how the loan program impacts that. Now that we know how these two loan programs stack up in terms of monthly payment, let's equate that into what you can actually qualify for. The payment is the first part of that. The program guidelines for debt to income ratio are the second element. So for FHA, we actually have two debt to income ratios. We have the housing to income ratio that is simply your housing payment principal, interest, taxes, insurance, HOA dues, if any, divided by your total qualifying income, every borrower's eligible qualifying income. They also calculate a total debt to income ratio that takes into account other expenses, an auto payment, student loans, credit cards, child support, alimony, anything else that you're required to pay on a monthly basis. In terms of qualifying, the most important number we want to look at is that front end or housing to income ratio. FHA limits it at 46.99%. Now, when we factor in the other debts, all of that has to stay under 56.99%. So you can have an additional 10% of your qualifying income in debts for FHA. Now, when we compare that to conventional, for qualified borrowers, there's just one ratio and it's determined by the automated underwriting system, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. That is typically for the most well-qualified borrowers is gonna be 50%. Some borrowers are limited to 45% and for less well-qualified borrowers that don't have any reserves, that maybe don't have the best credit, don't have a big down payment, which may be some of you watching this, it can be under 45%. We are not guaranteed to get a 45 or a 50% debt to income ratio. And the most important thing to remember here is that if we can't get that automated approval at those debt to income ratios, we have no manual underwrite option. We have no fallback. So some people get pushed to FHA just because they cannot get an automated approval on conventional or FHA. But we have the fallback with FHA where an underwriter can actually go through and determine that the loan meets the guidelines. But for the purposes here of comparing the two programs, we're gonna assume that you are able to get an automated underwriting system loan approval and that we're able to go to the high end on conventional to that 50%. All right, so let's go back to our $500,000 purchase comparison. We're gonna compare the total monthly payment, including taxes and insurance, because that all goes into our debt to income ratio, plus the guideline, the limit that we can go to in terms of that debt to income ratio and determine how much income we need across the board to qualify. So for FHA, the total payment comes to a hair under $3,800. Since we have to keep our debt to income ratio under 47% means we need almost $8,100 a month of income to qualify. If we kick it over to conventional, we can go now to a 50% debt to income ratio. If you have that perfect 800 credit score, your payment is a hair over $4,000 thousand dollars which means we need to be just over eight thousand dollars about the same as with FHA so for these borrowers both of these loan programs can be a good option now if the score goes down to 720 payment now goes up to four thousand two hundred and forty five dollars a month we need an income of almost eighty five hundred dollars or four hundred and ten dollars more a month versus FHA so if we go all the way down to that 660 credit score you already saw on the monthly payment it's really high due to high mortgage insurance high high interest rate, you're looking at a total payment of $4,800 and needing income over $9,500 uh, a month. So $1,500 more income a month to qualify conventional with a 660 credit score than you would versus FHA. So pretty simple to see here. The borrowers with the absolute best credit scores can go either way, but other than perfect 800 credit, the advantage
percentage here again goes to FHA in terms of how much income is needed to qualify. All right, at this point, we've seen the difference in the monthly payment between the programs, the difference in the income to qualify. Now let's answer the important question of which requires less money to close. So here again, the down payment is pretty easy to understand. This is where conventional comes out ahead. They only require a 3% down payment, whereas FHA is going to require 3.5%. So again, using our example of a $500,000 purchase, 3% is only $15,000. 3.5 bumps that up $2,500 to $17,500 on a 500 purchase. So if you're at 400, the difference would be a little bit less than that. If you're at 650, the difference is going to be even more. The important thing to remember here is closing costs should not vary between these two loan programs. There is a, an invisible elephant in the room that we will talk about here, but in terms of closing costs that you see in terms of money you need to bring at closing, FHA and conventional are going to be the same. Prepaid items. Both of these loan programs are going to require you to have an escrow impound account to pay your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance when they come due. The amounts collected at closing, again, should be the same. Are we going FHA? Are we going conventional? Shouldn't have any difference. Now, we get to a, a subtle difference here because we generally look at your cash to close as your down payment plus your closing costs plus your prepaids. But there's another element there. We can reduce that by any credits that you get from an interested party. The interested party is typically the seller, but your agent, the listing agent, the seller, anyone involved in that transaction, if you're buying new construction, the builder can make a contribution. So it's important to note that on a conventional loan with only 3% down, you are limited to a maximum interested party contribution of 3%. So on our $500,000 example here, you are limited to a seller credit of $15,000 or a seller credit of $10,000 and an agent credit of $5,000. In total, you cannot get a credit of more than $15,000. FHA, on the other hand, we can go all the way up to 6%. So up to a $30,000 credit on a $500,000 purchase. Now let's go back and talk about that invisible cost I was referring to. What that is, is the upfront mortgage insurance premium that FHA charges. FHA has that nice low monthly mortgage insurance, despite the fact that they will lend to borrowers with much lower credit scores because they also charge an upfront mortgage insurance premium. The good news is that's financed into your loan. You don't actually need to come up with that money at closing, but it is a charge and we should account for it and walk through it here. So in our $500,000 example, you put three and a half percent down, which gives you a base loan amount of $482,500. But since most people don't pay the 1.75% upfront mortgage insurance premium out of pocket, it gets added to the loan. Again, in this example, that's $8,443. So when we add that into the loan and finance it, you have a $490,943 loan. So a bigger loan boosts the payment up a little bit higher in those terms. But the important thing to remember here is that it means you have less equity in your property. You made a $17,500 down payment on your $500,000 purchase, but you have an almost $491,000 loan, meaning only about $9,000 of equity. People will often ask, well, doesn't that mean I should do conventional possibly um, but at least it needs to be accounted for when we're doing a true apples to apples comparison if we wanted to compare uh, FHA directly to conventional we would say that 1.75 percent upfront mortgage insurance premium needs to be accounted for the easiest way to do that would be to equalize the interest rate we saw that conventional loans have a slightly higher interest rate but if we were to pay 1.75 points those interest rates look really, really similar. Still slightly higher for conventional, but very similar. The issue is we can't finance those points and most first time buyers that are looking at doing a 3% down don't have the ability to come up with an additional 1.75% on top of their 3% down payment. If they did, they'd probably be looking at a 5% down payment. Overall, let's look at the big picture of cash to close, including the upfront mortgage insurance premium, even though it's financed, and realize that this category is a big win for the conventional loan. You will have less money due at closing, less money owed on your loan. So I started the video by telling you the three big things are, what's my monthly payment? How much can I qualify for? And how much money do I have to have at closing? We've covered those, but those are not the only considerations. So I put a last group of things here, just other considerations, other things that we need to look at when considering these two programs before we decide which one is right for you. First, let's look at underwriting flexibility. This is gonna lean towards FHA. We already talked about the higher debt to income ratio. Across the board, the guidelines are more flexible on an 
FHA loan and you are more likely to get the automated approval. And if you don't get an automated approval, we can do the manual underwrite. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac don't explicitly state that they won't allow a manual underwrite. It is just nearly impossible to find a conventional manual underwrite out in the wild. Let's talk about the minimum credit score requirement. Many people will reach out and say, I want an FHA loan. I don't meet the conventional requirement because they've seen some internet videos that show conventional requires a 620. For three and a half percent down, FHA requires a 580 credit score. While that is absolutely true, that is what the guidelines say, the closer you get to those minimums, the less likely you are to get that automated approval. Now with FHA, we can do a manual underwrite, but it's gonna be more stringent underwriting. You're gonna require compensating factors and you're gonna have a lower debt to income ratio. So 580 and 620 are true. In a perfect world, uh, we wanna be above 620, 640 for FHA to get you the best terms. And if we're below 6, 680, you've probably seen at this point, conventional is probably not the right option for you. So again, in terms of minimum FICO, FHA is the winner there. In terms of a first time buyer requirement, FHA does not require you to be a first time home buyer. They have some limitations on if you do own another property, but you are not required to be a first time home buyer. On the conventional side, unless you meet the low to moderate income guidelines that would make you eligible for home ready or home possible, the 3% down options from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac do require you to be a first time home buyer. The good news is that doesn't mean that you've never owned a home. It means that you haven't taken the mortgage interest deduction on your tax return in the last three years. So if you owned a home 10 years ago, sold it, you can buy again as a first time home buyer using those programs. But when we look at that category, we say FHA is the winner because they don't have that requirement. Let's shift over and take a look at two special types of properties. The first one being condominiums. If you know that in your price point, you're gonna be looking at properties that are legally described as condominiums, this is probably an advantage for conventional because what conventional does is regardless of the condominium complex, they're gonna gather an HOA cert, some basic documents from the condominium association and confirm that it meets their guidelines. Now FHA on the other hand requires a prior approval of the complex. There are some loopholes for this, but many lenders don't do spot approvals or individual approvals. So it makes it more complex if you're looking to buy a condo and the unit that you've fallen in love with doesn't happen to be on the FHA approved list. It's not a hard stop, but it definitely can complicate issues there. So in that regard, if you're looking to buy a condo, other things being equal might push the scales towards conventional. Now let's look at if you're buying units or wanting to buy units, two to four units, you cannot purchase owner occupied with a conventional 3% down mortgage. You have to do 5%. There's some restrictions there, but you do have to go all the way up to 5%. FHA also has restrictions, but they will allow you to buy two, three, or four units using 3.5% down FHA financing. So in that regard, units probably leads towards FHA, but there are some situations where conventional would be better. So probably a wash. Now let's take a look at refinance requirements. Most folks are not super happy with where interest rates are and are looking forward to a point in the future when they will be able to refinance. Both programs will allow you to refinance your loan. There are some advantages to FHA in that you can do what's called a streamlined refinance, and that does not require an appraisal, and it does not require any income docs. So if your income changes in the future and you don't qualify, you won't be able to refinance on a conventional loan without bringing in another co-borrower to make the debt to income ratio line up. FHA says if you've made your payments on time and we're lowering your payment, we don't care about your income. You've already demonstrated your ability to repay. They also don't require that appraisal. So if we had a dip in home values in the future that coincided with interest rates going much lower, with the FHA loan, you'll still be able to take advantage of the lower interest rates because they don't require an appraisal. So in terms of refinancing, I would say we would give a slight edge there to FHA because some additional flexibilities. Now, if we take a look back at that upfront mortgage insurance premium, we'll remember conventional doesn't have it, FHA does, that would be a clear advantage to the conventional loan. On the mortgage insurance front, another advantage to the conventional loan is the ability to remove mortgage insurance once you've built up 20% or more equity in your home. On the FHA loan, since I think it's about 2010, you are required to have mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. If you've got it paid down to $10,000 and it's worth a million dollars, it doesn't matter. You will always have mortgage insurance on there. Probably not that big of a deal. Most first time buyers either move or refinance 
well before you get to the 30 year repayment period. But if that's important to you, it is a definite advantage to the conventional loan that you can keep your current financing and get rid of your mortgage insurance in the future when you've built up enough equity in the home. So overall, if we're looking at this category of intangibles, I would say it leans towards FHA, but there's definitely advantages, pros and cons to each. All right, if you've been keeping score at home, you've probably noticed most of the advantages here go towards FHA, but that doesn't mean that FHA is the right loan for all buyers. I get a lot of calls from people saying, hey, I've been watching internet videos, I've been doing my research, I want an FHA loan. It's important to know that the FHA loan is not right for everyone, just like the conventional loan is not right for anyone. Which loan is right for you? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on a number of factors, the factors that we've gone through here. The biggest one is your credit score. Other than folks with perfect credit scores, 780, 800 and above, FHA is gonna have a much lower monthly payment. And on top of that, it's gonna allow you to qualify for more home with more flexibility and underwriting. But if you do have perfect credit, or you like the idea of putting a little less down, hate the idea of having the upfront mortgage insurance premium and giving up some of your home equity, or life of loan mortgage insurance, conventional loans can be a great option. The bottom line is you need a loan officer that understands the differences between these programs and most importantly, takes the time to listen to you, your hopes, your goals, your dreams, your plans for this property, and then lays out both options side by side. I like to say that numbers never lie. And the only way that numbers can tell their story is to lay them out side by side, where you can see your cash to close, you can see your monthly payment, you can see how much of a seller credit you can get. You can look at all of those variables and determine which of those options is right for you. If you're looking for an experienced loan officer who can lay out all of your options and show you the pros and cons of each of these awesome minimum down programs and help you make the best decision for you, I'd love to help. There's a link down in the description where we can get connected and get the ball rolling. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified anytime we post new content and you can learn everything you need to know to buy right, borrow smart, and build wealth through home ownership. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.